Mm. Let me get loose. All right. I would do that, but then I'd break my other knee. Oh, it didn't go well for me just now. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joe Lyrics episode know, seven. Can it be? Seven. We've made it's it the seven. lucky episode. This is your lucky episode. So if you were going to get a gambling problem, now's the time to do it. Right after you. That's the perfect the place. Yeah. The, the song I picked turns out, I believe Alex said it was his favorite Billy Joel song, right? Yeah, I think it even is his favorite song. Oh, awesome. And it, yeah. is, a, and it is at least my second favorite, if not my favorite. It's, it's here's what I find happens. I don't know if this happens to you. But sometimes a song will come on by any given artist. And if I really like the song, I'll go, oh, it's my favorite song. But then if another song comes on after it that I also like, I go, oh, it's my favorite song. <laughs> sure. So that Yeah, I have um, weak allegiances. Yeah. So I will hear Vienna and I'll go, wow, this is clearly my favorite song. And then uh, scenes from an Italian restaurant will come on and go, oh, how nice to hear my favorite song. <laughs> oh, New York State of Mind. Well, well, there's my favorite song right there. Well, you gotta you gotta break it down. If you're uh, a Billy Joel fan, uh, for as long as I have been, you have a favorite song to sing along with, and then a favorite song in the car, <laughs> and you know, and so on. So you basically you can make all of them your favorite song. I guess my favorite slow one. Yeah. What's your favorite to sing along with? Uh, well, it's not Vienna because that is hard. Yeah. <laughs> it is hard to think. I think it's New York State of Mind. Yeah. Because um, I have done that at karaoke many times and hurt myself. <laughs> there are some very high notes. Do you, do you remember in Chicago that you and I used to go to karaoke fairly regularly with those other dummies? Yes. I have a right. fond memory of you singing. First of all, I was you sang. Um, uh, honey, do you remember that song? You know that oh, song, right? Yeah, Bobby Goldsboro. Bobby Goldsboro, and you made me cry because you did it beautifully. Oh, I thank cried. you. <laughs> yeah, you did it beautifully. And then um, I signed up to sing Beyond the Sea by Bobby Darren, and this is my other favorite yes. memory of you. I signed up to sing Bobby Darren <laughs> Beyond the Sea, and then you saw that I signed up to sing that, and you go, uh, can I sing that instead? And I went, all right, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, what a dick. No, nah, I didn't think so. <laughs> you just really wanted to sing it. And I was like, ah, I'd enjoy hearing you sing it. And, <laughs> and the only reason I picked it is because I really like the song and I like it enough to know somebody else but me should sing it. So, so, because <laughs> you're not a great singer, maybe, but I'm worse for sure. So, <laughs> I, I just am. Here's my go-to, yeah. by the way, at karaoke now, is uh, Bring Him Home from Les Mis. Oh, no. No. Because it bums people I... out. It bums people out, and that's so funny to me. <laughs> you, uh, you have a flirtation with the idea of the audience as the enemy, don't you? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it is a more fun way to play things. Especially at karaoke. Um, oh, at karaoke, I just wish that uh, no one else was there and I oh. could just sing. <laughs> I uh, put up with the fact that the other people are at the bar. Ah, that's great. So I would you... much rather just, I'm just singing to sing it. I'm not trying to make anyone happy or sad. <laughs> I'm like, then, this is for me. Then you need to take a trip to Japan just for that, right? For the one person karaoke booth? Yeah. Well, you can do that here in New York, it turns out. Oh. Yeah. Do you think you'd like it? Or do you think you'd go, okay, this is too much, just me? Um, no. Well, I've gone with like two other people <laughs> on occasion. That's probably amazing, right? It's great because you are constantly up, <laughs> it's constantly your turn. Yeah. Um, and still nobody's listening. <laughs> Perfect. Um, it is, it's the weird thing about karaoke. No one will listen to you because everyone wants to sing, obviously. Yeah. 
uh, and they all have eight songs lined up <laughs> or they're looking through the books. Yeah. Now, um, now my wife, you know, my wife, Mary Jo, when we yes, go see that a beautiful karaoke, singer, I like when she, it's always funny to me when she gets up and sings at karaoke because nobody listens to anybody, but to her, they don't listen at first. Yeah. And they'll do this thing. <laughs> and I like seeing it happen. Yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah. My wife, I, I've said this many times. You know, sometimes you have a friend and they'll go, Hey, I have a band. Come see my band. And you steal yourself for what that experience is going to be. Yes. Because they're going to suck. They just sure, don't. Sure. You just, it's all about what time are they going on? Yep. And you're like, and, oh boy. and therefore, what time can I go home? Exactly. So you get, you're like, okay. And then you get there and they suck. They're not good. No. They're, if they do a cover, they ruin a song you like. If they wrote a song, it's too much. It's way too it's much. A for... Pretty good rule of thumb that if the band has to invite you to their concert, they are bad. Yep. Yeah. Anytime somebody who's never seen Mary Jo, they always have the same attitude that I have. They're like, okay, I'll go see this girl. Ooh. Okay. Sure. Which is fair if you don't know. Yep. And then when they get there, they always leave going, oh my God, it's kind of amazing. That was actually worth it. That was fucking <laughs> worth it. I, that's why I like, as a performer, I prefer performing in front of strangers as opposed to people I know. I'm always happier at the end of a show in front of strangers because then I know for sure if they liked it or not. Because people, you know, right. are often yes. too kind. And seeing my wife perform in front of strangers who start crying, the best. Yeah. The best. You always love it when strangers are crying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's my thing. <laughs> 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 so uh. I picked this week's song. I picked Vienna. <laughs> what? Sorry, I'm laughing at how far, how far afield we went. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. yeah, we're back testing the patience of the people who've chosen to listen. <laughs> I think at least all the things we said made sense. They were very- Yes, I agree. Um, I picked this song. I have always liked this song. I can legitimately say that as long as I've known this song, which is a long time, this song is, man, it's from, remind me where it's from. It's- The Stranger? Yes, it's from The Stranger. You're right. 77. 77 and i have always loved this song it's a very pretty song it starts out very very simply it's just a little bit of piano mm -hmm. and it just kind of leans in a little bit and unlike some other songs of billy joel's it never uh it never goes big because he likes to do that where he'll start a little slow and then things get big right. this song has a uh, has a groove that he just is like this is the groove of this song. Uh, it's a little yeah. like it's a little like Piano Man in that regard, in the sense that it doesn't change too much, but it's much prettier than Piano Man. Much prettier, um, but yeah, this is one where like you know how uh, uh, as a fan you get defensive when people go, oh, uh, Billy Joel is a soft rock. And you're like, hey, that, well, he could do other stuff, but this <laughs> one, I'm like, yeah, this is this is soft rock. Yep. Which and is this, fine. I don't disparage the genre, but there's no arguing. I'm like, yeah, this one's soft. Soft rock gets a lot of bad press because there's a lot of it that's so shitty. Yes. You know, but the but when it's amazing, it's the it's just. And the problem is, is that the amount of music of soft rock that's garbage is pretty hefty. And the <laughs> amount that's like, oh, artistic and good and valuable is small. It's just so happens this is in the right category. This is, I, I would say, an exceptional song. Yes. Um, just, it was never a hit, I guess. Really? No, that um, which was surprising to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like I learned about it later than I would have. And I heard it and it's like, oh, why isn't this on the radio all the time? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, why do I have to listen to uh, Only the Good Die Young? Not my favorite <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, um, this is much prettier on the same album, I think. And, yeah, and uh, I would say uh, both fine lyrically, but I think this one's better lyrically, too. Uh, yeah. So let, let me go. I'll do first lyrics. It's slow okay. down. Slow down, you crazy child. You're so ambitious for a juvenile. That first line, I just really like. The flow of it is very nice. Just <laughs> the poetry of that is very nice, don't you think? I do. It's very, um, you know, the song is a, has a lot to do with his father. I Yeah, we'll definitely, yeah. He was uh, an immigrant from Austria. Yeah. Um, and it does sound like you, cr crazy child is a very European thing to call someone, I think. Um, and a very Jewish thing. Yeah. And uh, this is very different from a lot of his songs. And yes, <laughs> the first thing I notice is like, oh, here he is once again telling somebody what to do. Right. And giving unsolicited advice. You know what? To I, a younger person. Yeah. It occurred to me that that for sure is definitely a bunch of advice. But also, as I'm listening to it, I'm like, <laughs> but at least it's better advice. This is pretty good advice. Yeah, this is some measured, a little more mature advice yeah. than we usually get from him. In fact, and it's uh, the opposite of what he's telling people to do usually. <laughs> That's true. Take less action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's and uh, it, it's consistent too. Like it's just like, hey, relax, man. It's just. Just chill this out. This is like advice he would get most yeah. of the time. It's definitely Which like... Which makes me wonder if he's not writing from a different point of view. Um, I feel like he is, in a, but I think you might be right. He might be writing... I wonder if he is sort of writing from the perspective of his father rather than as the father. Like imagining his father talking to right. him. Uh, I did read a little bit about the history of this and it was written at a moment when he finally got back in touch with his pop, which must have been, right. uh, you know, that that's a that can be an awful moment if your pop has been absent, of course, or it can be amazing that you were like, oh, cool, I don't I don't hate this guy, and I understand him a little better now, and I feel less abandoned as a young man <laughs> right. who finally gets to talk to his dad. Right. Because those are some complicated feelings for sure. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I'll let you know if it ever happens. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Believe me, it's better if it doesn't. Yeah. Um, Slow down, you crazy child. You're so ambitious for a juvenile. I really like the I like the sound of that lyric. I it, like uh, the implication that uh, we're talking to a criminal. Oh yeah, uh, I had even yes. But then right. if you're so Good smart, enough. then tell me, why are you so afraid? That's great. That's great. And it it cuts to the quick. I like that there's no bullshit there. There's like, yeah, you think you're so smart, but then then what's your problem? Why are you you're, scared? Yeah. Right. Why are you um, all, Yeah. And at the same time, he's already, already giving advice and already complaining that you're not listening to the advice <laughs> <laughs> oh if you're so smart and again i'm not jewish but i know jewish <laughs> and this is, sounds jewish yeah and i would say and, having known you for a long time you're a little bit jewish <laughs> i don't know i don't know what the laws are regarding i, yeah. <laughs> I work in comedy <laughs> that's yeah. all i'll say Yes. Well, uh, and I also don't uh, believe that Jesus was magic. So maybe I am Jewish. Well, and you do traffic in. Uh, I will not read the comments this week. Yeah. You do traffic in problems with uh, learning to deal with your mom, right? It's true. Uh, yeah, you love, you that's love part of my mom, traffic. You love your mom deeply, and then that's a complicated relationship. So, so yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's that's the main tenant of that religion, right? <laughs> I will tell you. Uh, so when I converted to Judaism, uh, I uh, oh. 
Yeah. So when I converted to Judaism and I, I would go to synagogue a lot, and then I stopped going to synagogue as much. And I mentioned that to a friend of mine and he goes, ah, now you're really Jewish. <laughs> That's a great. That's a great Jewish joke. Indeed, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, and I and when Fantastic. you tell people, so if you tell, I tell you, I converted to Judaism. Your reaction, as most people, is like, oh, that's interesting. If you tell another Jew that yeah. you converted to Judaism, the, the reaction is generally, well, why would you do that? Just fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's where you want to be. Yeah. Um, people who also don't want to be there. Yeah. So what I hope, the joke I always say is I converted to Judaism for the same reason everybody else does anything, which is I'd like to be more comfortable in my own skin. Um, mm -hmm. Not working. Not working. So <laughs> no. making me the most Jewish ever. So, yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of which, you, I, we've not talked about your background right now. Yep. Which to me, uh, you know, looks a little bit like a religious ceremony just went down. It, it does. Or a birthday party. I put it, so here's what I did, Alex. I put this together for you. I threw this for you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's my hint. Yep. I decided uh -huh. to, I threw this party for you. It's a big day. <laughs> it's a birth birthday party. Uh, I even more. It's more for an anniversary. Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> a special so time, a special time in your life as you grow up in this particular faith. It's mm -hmm. Oh, it's a confirmation. Yeah, I threw a party for your confirmation. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, uh, only the good die young. That's right. <laughs> only the good die young. Yeah, I got a nice white dress. Yeah, you look great, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, in real life, I had a red velvet suit yeah. for my confirmation. Man, you want to hear? This is a bad I, scene. <laughs> I, uh, I've been married to Mary Jo for a very long time. That's true. One time we were going through stuff just getting rid of stuff putting certain stuff away the way you do because you collect crap and you don't want to be hoarders and i came across this very ornate cross that she owns and i said uh oh what's this from and she goes this is from my confirmation and i went you're not catholic and she goes yes i am and i'm like how did this not come up <laughs> <laughs> we've been together for over 30 years like Think that would have somebody oh would have God. what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh <laughs> religion. Wow, really keeping the mystery. <laughs> we should have a conversation once in a while, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good that you still find things to talk about. Yeah. And uh I'll tell you that conversation oh. uh ended right about then, not uncomfortably. It was just like, oh, okay. And then put this away and now other stuff. Yeah, there isn't much more to say about it. Yeah, it's not like I found an onk or something and I was like, oh, what? I don't know. Explain <laughs> this. An onk. That's a good I really one. didn't think that word would come up tonight. I'm, <laughs> I'm happy it did. It's a good crossword word. Oh, yeah. I, it, it is if I could spell it. It'd be a good one. I don't know if I could. Um, I'm going to get into the next verse because it's also very Jewish. Oh, yeah. Bust. Where's the fire? What's the hurry about? <laughs> you better cool it off before you burn it out. You've got so much to do and only so many hours in a day. Uh -huh. I'm reading it a little bit with the, <laughs> the accent. But isn't it all very... So, only so many hours in a day. I really think that is directly derived from like immigrant speak. Absolutely, absolutely. There's only so much time. Yeah. Um, I used to, when I was in high school, not to push this any further, um, my best friend and I, my best friend who was a Methodist, 
I was raised very Catholic. For whatever reason, we both read the book, uh, The Joy of Yiddish. Um, I think I picked it up in the school library because it had jokes in it. It had like Jewish jokes sure. as part of it, but it was also just a dictionary of Yiddish. Um, so we like both were reading it at the same time and we would pass notes that we had written <laughs> using as much Yiddish as we could. <laughs> I still great. have them somewhere. And uh, today he is a Methodist minister and I, um, uh, there's no God is what I figured out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we both still love the Yiddish. It just is a nice way of speaking. Yiddish is great. Yiddish draws, Yiddish and Spanish to me uh, and uh, German draw attention to the fact that uh, the way your language evolves side by side with your culture is not an accident. The way no. that Yiddish is very much a reflection of the people who spoke it or speak it, I should say. And it definitely has a sense of humor to just even just the way the language works that is reflective of the people who speak it. Just like, just like German has words in it where you go, oh, that's unpleasant. Why, why would you say <laughs> something like that? Why, why would you express an yeah. idea like that? And whereas like Spanish has the word like machismo is from Spanish and it's very much reflective of a cultural thing, right? Yes, you know, and, and musical at the same time. Indeed, yeah. Yeah, Yiddish is awesome. Yiddish is awesome. It's, uh, I remember why I'm remembering this, but uh, Colin Powell speaks Yiddish. <laughs> did you know that? I did not know that. And he was asked, they said, they said uh, at some dinner, they said, we've heard you speak uh, Yiddish. And he goes, abyssal. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Isn't that awesome? My wife, by the way, oh. is bringing me coffee. Give it up for my wife. We talked about you. Oh, good. My wife just brought Hi, Mary Jo. Hi. <laughs> that's, the, that's the lady. Pretty lady. Weird ghost cameo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Mom. Love you. Um, yeah, Yiddish is awesome. That's uh, great. So uh, what are any other thoughts on this particular lyric? I like this lyric. Where's the fire? I like it all. Yeah. Where's the fire? What's the hurry about? <laughs> you better cool it off before you burn it out. This is all good pandemic advice, too, by the way. Indeed. Very now prescient. Does it occur <laughs> to you the way it does to me that you better cool it off before you burn it out? Also feels like a very uh, 50s rock and roll phrase that he probably enjoyed saying that's leather jacket on a motorcycle. Yeah. That cool it off before we burn it out. Yeah. Very uh, auto auto shop. Yeah. And it, it's which I believe was always Billy Joel aspirational. I don't believe he was ever a motorcycle guy really. I, I'm sure he owned a motorcycle, but but Oh yeah. In the in the way that like Sometimes you're like, oh, that's what I'd like to be. Like at one point I owned a gi because I was taking karate lesson lessons. That was aspirational. Yeah. I'm not a karate guy. <laughs> that was me yeah. being very optimistic. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, I have a gym membership, so I get it. Yeah. I was in one that is karate, my, uh, gi. I was in one karate tournament once where where i actually fought it would also be the one time in my life i've been knocked out <laughs> well done yeah. i mean you got what you came for indeed i did <laughs> and the funny thing is the guy wasn't trying to knock me out we were both just bad at it he threw a kick he probably shouldn't have thrown and i was like i better lean into this kick just <laughs> No instincts. No. <laughs> but do you know that when the I feel like I do, do I know, did I see you wearing that gi at any point? I'm sure. Is this before I knew you? No, you probably did see me in that gi because the thing about me is if 
I, not as much now because I'm an older fella, but definitely when I was young, if I started to like a thing and you were my friend, you were going to hear oh, yeah. it way more than you wanted to hear about it for sure. So true. And here's the other thing about you when you were a young man is that uh, you were a vegan and everything you wore looked like a gi. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> really? Isn't that a spandex bodysuit? Why does it look like a gi on you? <laughs> <laughs> How do you not understand why people are put off by you, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, now I own shirts. Huh? Pretty good, right? There you go. These are all right looking. Yeah, yeah. Killing it. A little bit. Uh, but still, if I ever if they ever call me in to identify your body, I will ask to look at the sternum. <laughs> and I'll go, yeah, that's it. I know that sternum. <laughs> that is a great memory. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I believe we were. Uh, I, I feel like we're taking a lot of side trips. Yes. A, because we always do. And B, because it's uh, a little repetitive. Yes. But you know when the truth is told that you can get what you want or you get old, you're going to kick off before you even get halfway through. Man, bummer. But also yeah. true. It is uh, now as an older fellow, I'm like, it's fucking good advice i'll say that it is definitely good advice to say look you you what try to be happy at the very least is because i feel like an undercurrent of this is like there's a lot of stuff you're going to try to do and sure try to do those things but give yourself a break and ease off the pedal and look around because right. some of you're it's gonna, gonna get old happen. anyway yep might as well do stuff. Some of it's going to happen. Some of it isn't. And, you know, stick to the things that matter. And then we get to the line. When will you realize Vienna waits for you? And if you're just looking at the lyrics and you've never heard the song before and you don't know the title, that's a real left turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vienna, I thought we were doing life advice. Yeah. What does Vienna have to do with anything? <laughs> um, did you look? I into, did you did what happened? What, did you look into what Vienna apparently represents? Because I, I did. Know. Yeah, I looked it up. I feel like I had heard that before. I've heard him talk about it in interviews, um, but in the context of just the song, right? <laughs> like Vienna. It, he's making it, it sounds like um, the way you would talk about like a mythical destination, like yeah. Valhalla or Nirvana. Or something. Yeah. But it's a real place on earth. It's so, a real place on earth. Damn beautiful for sure. I've not been, but that's what I hear. Yeah. Absolutely. I've um, also not been, but just looking at, I'm looking at pictures. I'll tell, I'll be honest with you because this was me thinking I was smart, but being dumb. Billy Joel was the smart one um, because of some of the musical different because he plays uh, that it's not an accordion, but it's that that one, whatever that's called. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what it's called, but I know what you mean, yeah. At one point, I thought, did he mean to say Venice? <laughs> what a word. Yeah, because because that to me he just sounds was like, oh, not enough syllables. And that to me sounds like Italian music from Venice, but it turns out it's actually also music you might hear in Vienna, so I'm wrong. Yeah, that makes some sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a weird, I really feel like he at some point was dorking around at the pian piano and singing Vienna Waits for You for like a year, and his wife or girlfriend said, you got to write the rest of the fucking song or stop doing that. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, okay. Uh, I'll write a bunch of stuff that <laughs> has nothing to do with Vienna. Yeah. And I'll stick that in there. And I'll know what it means. Kind of one of the things I get the impression of is, you know how sometimes, sometimes you'll write a joke and you know that only a few people are going to get the damn joke, but you like the joke a lot. 
So you're like, and I don't want to explain the joke because to me, explaining it would ruin it. Yep. So you decide to just tell the joke anyway and say, well, if hopefully you remember when you were in high school and you took that logic class or whatever dumb joke you wrote. <laughs> yeah. And it feels like that to me, like it feels like Vienna waits for you. He could explain that more, but if he did, I think it would destroy the song. Then it gets a very literal. Yeah, it would destroy uh, the it's feeling. More fun to do it with. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is that too. It's um, a song about just a, a feeling more than anything else. Then, yeah. Just like, oh, this is, uh, you know, I, I have some music that's uh, Viennese. It's the home of his father, it's the home of Beethoven. Yeah. Um, and, so uh, Freud, speaking of advice. And the, uh, the other thing I read was that Vienna has represented a crossroads for a long time because in yeah. the old world, it was like a place that you'd go through on a trade route. So people from a lot of different cultures would, would meet there. So it has poetically represented a crossroads for probably hundreds, if not a thousand years. I don't know. But um, it, that's, I think, part of it, too, is Vienna itself represents. It represents a crossroads. And this song is, hey, dude, you're on a cross. Relax, man. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. So, uh, um, go ahead. You continue the lyrics. Huh? Go ahead and continue. What's our next verse? OK. Uh, where are we? Slow down. You're doing fine. You can't be everything you want to be before your time. Again, great. Great flow and good advice. Although it's so romantic on the borderline tonight. Not sure. I think, I think he's, you can't be everything you want to be before your time. Although it's so romantic, pushing yourself to the limit and pushing yourself and pushing yourself, maybe don't, maybe don't do that. Maybe don't hurt yourself. It kind of feels right. like maybe don't hurt yourself. Um, the bringing in romantic makes me wonder if he's talk, uh, talking to a, about a girl. If all of this advice was like, don't rush this girl. Or if it's the other kind of romantic, as in poetry and literature. Yeah, I think it's the romantic. To me, it feels like the romance of, you know, the romance we ascribe when we're living on the edge. Like, you can, yeah. be, you can be very romantic about, you know, when we're living in Chicago, you could romanticize having no money and drinking too much. And like, you're like, we're doing a show every night that no one wants to see. This is what it's all about, man. Yeah, and yeah. Tim and I, uh, my friend Tim Bennett, you remember Tim Bennett, good sure. morning. I remember just him and I in Fancy Ketchup sometimes, was an old dumb comedy group. We would write sketches that we were just sure were brilliant. And then we'd con people into going to see the show. And then, uh, <laughs> then people would come to see the show and we'd be doing this nonsense that was really just two dudes who didn't know how to deal with their erections writing sketches. <laughs> and you had people in the audience going, ah, oh, boy, <laughs> I could have just gone to a different bar and bought booze and they wouldn't be sitting in front of me doing this horse shit. <sighs> <laughs> what was that bar called? Um, Hell, I don't. <laughs> it's a little back room, right? Yeah. There's a little back room. Yeah. Oh man, it was in. Oh boy, I'll find it. All right, I believe. Right now. While you're looking it up, I will say I, I think it would have been nice if Billy Joel would have been there to give us some advice because we were we were a funny group, but if we could have just for a minute chilled out, we just would have been funnier. That's all. Yeah, a little editing. Yeah, that's what we all could have used, I think. Indeed, internal you might remember and external. That I did a show uh, called "The Absolute Truth," 
that was a sketch comedy show that ran two and a half hours. <laughs> I don't know what we were thinking. <laughs> like if that is, and there was some good stuff in it. Like I'm not completely embarrassed about the content. Some of it for sure. There's but yeah. There was 85 good minutes in it. Yeah. It would have been a perfectly fine show. There's whole sketches from the from the fancy catch of days that I go, that's really good writing. That's you know. Yeah, there's a couple I still think about from that show. Yeah. And then there's things that I go, ah. Oh uh, yeah, a whole we did that whole sketch so I could wear that wig, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever the case. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you have what borderline? What borderline are we talking about? It's so romantic on the borderline tonight. I don't think Vienna is anywhere near the border, is it? No. So that's what I'm saying. I think the borderline here is is when you're pushing yourself to the edge. All right. I feel like it's when you're you're driving your body into the ground late nights trying to get everything you wanted right now i think it's that thing it's so romantic to just like try to punch through but right. you know what you could do is get a good night's sleep maybe <laughs> reread it in the morning do some editing yeah eat a breakfast do one show a week yeah don't drink every night. <laughs> um, uh, too bad, but it's the life you lead. You're so ahead of yourself that you forgot what you need. Very Jewish. Yeah. Though you can see when you're wrong, you know you can't always see when you're right. I like that. Huh? I like that. Yeah. I All the phrasing is very nice. Yeah. And goodness knows, don't we do that even now? Like, I do have to take time, uh, even now, just going, well, you know what? That was actually pretty good, that thing you did. Like, sometimes I'll look at a piece of work. I'm always pleased when I have comedy recorded or something, and, and in a month or a year, I can go, damn, that really was funny, and I feel good about it. <laughs> do you know what i mean because i i can be so hypercritical i'm sure you are as well and those moments i know that thing where you can't sit in your success nearly as long as you can sit in your failures yeah for you sure. know i can enjoy a good failure for a year <laughs> <laughs> but a success is just like a relief you're like oh it worked next thing yeah but failure is like i'm in the wrong business where's my, what am i doing I'm too old to change jobs. <laughs> it was like, okay, that's, it was one good joke and one bad joke. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you take it from there. All right. I will, well, why don't I? Let's take a look. Uh, you've got your passion. You've got your pride. But don't you know that only fools are satisfied? That almost, uh, and now I think we're just kind of like going... We, we we backtracked on our thought about hey enjoy <laughs> about taking our time <laughs> you got your pet yeah honestly he's like it's as if the guy said you know you're right i have done some cool things he's like ah, hold on a minute i'm not, I'm not saying that much <laughs> yeah <laughs> you got your passion you got your pride but don't you know that only fools are satisfied dream on but don't imagine they'll all come true well that's very jewish <laughs> you've got all kinds of dreams that's awesome just know that a lot of them are just, yeah. are just that dreams it's all about yeah it's all about tempering things yeah yeah not too not too happy not too sad yeah, yeah. not not too not too proud not too much pride not too much shame just take it's your very, time it's definitely jewish but also very parental yeah parental. slow down not that slow. Speed up again. Yep. Now you're going too fast. So it's uh, <laughs> like, all right. Uh, yeah, I like that it's not all just like shitting on your ambitions. It's like, oh no, have your ambitions, but also uh, you won't get most of what you want, but keep wanting things. Yeah. It's very back and forth. And it is even maybe trying to get the person to see that it is in the it is in the trying to get a thing where the joy is anyway. 
Yeah. Getting I think that uh, dream on, but don't imagine they'll all come true is my favorite line. Yeah. And kind of the thesis for it. And isn't it when you listen to it in context, when you're listening to the song, he delivers the hell out of dream on, but don't imagine yeah. it'll all come true. Cause it's not, it's not that Billy Joel who's trying to overly show you that he's rock and roll. It's, it's absolutely delivered sincerely and truthfully. It's one of one of his truest. I yeah, mean, the feeling he delivers as a as a singer here is just about the most perfect Billy Joel. Yes. Well, yeah. Keep... Very present in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. This seems like not. Yeah. No errors. He's not putting on errors. Yeah. This is no, the, really this. I really, I actually really mean this. Yeah, it's it's nice because you kind of feel like. I guess this makes sense that it would be one of his favorite songs because, when you listen to it, you really do feel like, for a good, uh, for the good couple minutes that you're listening to this song, you're like, this is the piece of art where I'm getting to know Billy Joel, the real guy, a little bit, as much as you can ever yeah. know an artist. It also feels like uh, his fifth or sixth try at this idea. Yeah. Um, of the advice giving <laughs> guy. <laughs> and uh, like, this is the one where I think he might even feel like, oh, that I landed it. Yeah. This is what I've been trying to do. You know what would be a fun album to put out if they're a best of album, or maybe I'll write to Billy Joel. You should, he should put out a, an album that's just called Advice from a stranger and oh. it's every song where he's telling somebody what they should do <laughs> and then he's going to realize oh this is going to be like three uh, a three disc set <laughs> yeah. well, this is just like greatest hits oh no <laughs> <laughs> when will you realize vienna waits for you and you know what, even though this is only what, this is the second time you've said it in the song. When you think about it, that's not a lot of times when you consider that that's your thesis. So that's pretty lovely to not, he hasn't hammered us with the words Vienna waits for you, but he has done a really good job of say, being very consistent in telling us what the message is. Like when we were talking about running on ice, um, <laughs> the lyrics are all different, but they're very consistent in delivering a cogent message. Yes. I like yeah. that a lot. I, I always like when there's like a, a little lyrical switch up and it's not just the same chorus. Yeah. Um, I also think, um, I think he is using Vienna sort of as a mythical place or a state of being. Yeah. And I think the whole point is that it is waiting for you. You don't have to hurry there. You don't have to rush this. You can take a day off. It'll be there. Like your that's, success will be there. That's lovely. I like that I, a lot. That's, I think it's not the idea. <laughs> this is uh, a lame way to explain it, but I think his point isn't that Vienna waits for you, it's that Vienna waits for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make any sense? It, it makes it, all It doesn't matter that it's Vienna, whatever your Vienna is. Yeah. No, it makes mm -hmm. all the sense in the world. And I'm telling you that when we do put together the tour of our show, we're going to Vienna. <laughs> we start in Vienna. Yeah. Uh, then let's go to Little Italy, I guess. And yeah. then that's it. <laughs> 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 and then uh, we'll be killed then what and then we'll be killed i suspect yeah yeah, yeah vienna will put up with it i don't think <laughs> new york will put up with us yeah oh those idiots <laughs> no get them <laughs> uh i hope someday there's a group of people who yells get that get get them about me <laughs> i mean i like your chances <laughs> <laughs> I will feel like I've done something then, really. <laughs> yeah, you've really moved people. Uh, <laughs> one time, uh, 
One time I was doing stand up in Arizona at uh, the Honda Casino in Sholo, Arizona. Wow. You know why it's called Sholo? No. It is a true story, or they just put it on a sign. So it's either true or it's just <laughs> true enough to print. Yeah. And that is so it's S H O L O is the name of the city. Apparently, the land was won in a game of Sholo. Which wow, is, which is what? A card game. It's one of those silly card games, and it's like a two where you get two cards and the lowest hand wins. Okay. Wow. So Sholo is supposedly that. <laughs> Great. One, one time I was doing uh, a comedy at the Shola at this uh, the Honda Casino, which is the not named after the tribe, not the car. Um, and uh, I did a joke about I was doing a joke about gay marriage and how gay marriage is why do you care was basically the premise of the joke. Like mm -hmm. well, it doesn't hurt you is basically what the joke is. Right. And uh, and then I made an assertion that I do kind of believe that I suspect that every straight guy, there's there's the right guy that they go, okay, I'll have sex with that guy. That's a theory I have. Uh -huh. And then and at the time my joke was I go, like for example, for me, Zach Efron. That was the, at the time, that was the joke. Sure. And I said, and then just be and I and I go, because I think. He seems like the kind of guy who'd take care of you. That was part of the joke. <laughs> and then I would always, one of the jokes I would always go, I go, even me, I'm that for somebody. Some some straight guy would see me and go, that. Like like you, sir. It would always be the joke and it would always get a big laugh because i picking out somebody in the crowd. and it was, So I right. went, like you, sir. And the guy goes, what? <laughs> 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 and he was all beef. He was all, oh, I just, no. and I was going, well, okay, maybe not you. <laughs> and <laughs> so then I, I hid in the dressing room for the rest of the night because he was mad at just the, just the suggestion. Just, just the comedy suggestion <laughs> that he might want to have sex with you. Yes. And I was, <laughs> uh, it was, it's such a funny memory. Just because I was in the green room and I was like, oh, I don't think there's another exit. So I guess I'm just here. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that's the best. Do you know how scared I was? I'll tell you how scared I was. That line never came back to the act. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, maybe that was the perfect reaction. Yep. That was what you wanted all along. Get him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You like the idea of ro romanticized on the borderline tonight? I, I like the idea of somebody go get it, saying, get him, until somebody goes, get him. And then I go, nah, I don't like that. <laughs> like, all right, I'm not doing that joke ever again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a good way to force yourself to keep writing material. Indeed, yeah, because you're like, well, I don't want to get killed for that joke, so I'll start a new joke. <laughs> right. There's something else that might get me killed. <laughs> All right, uh, dream on, but don't imagine the law come true. When will you realize Vienna waits for you? All right, take it from there. Uh, slow down, you crazy child, reiterated. You take the phone off the hook and disappear for a while. It's all right, you can afford to lose a day or two. Uh, very parental, Yeah. a day or two. <laughs> Don't take a week off, you slow. <laughs> That's true. Take Thursday off. <laughs> yeah, take Thursday off, and then I expect to see you at the shop. <laughs> um, when will you realize Vienna waits for you? Now it's like a crescendo in the song. Yeah. Uh, and you know that when the truth is told that you can get what you want or you can just get old. You can do both. I don't understand why it's one or the other. I Well, you can get what you want or you can just get, I mean, you're getting old either way. Yeah. Um, that I, is a thing that uh, is a real sad aspect of like old rock stars. You see them and they won. They got everything they wanted to. They, 
picked up a guitar when they were 12 or whatever. Yep. And they did it. They became a rock star. They had sex with a million groupies. They toured the world. They did it all. And yet now they like can't eat many foods. <laughs> they have to take <laughs> medications and walk with a cane. Yeah. Uh, it's still like you still got old. Yeah. And I have to hope that they're fine. <laughs> and I think a lot of them are mad and in a bad mood. But I hope that most of them are like, I did it. It's fine that I uh, shit my pants once a week. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. hope so. I remember, you know, when you like, uh, Frank, you know, the Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons um, would still tour. And there, it's a, a phenomenon that happens at Indian casinos for the most part, where I'll be performing in one room and I'll see the poster for who's performing in the bigger room. And in the bigger yeah. room, it's always some band that was important at one point. It was a, it yeah. really like a Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. And I always find the poster hilarious because a lot of times the poster is a picture of Frankie Valley with the beautiful coiffed, 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 uh, <laughs> coiffed, uh, black. His hair is black, and it's there's a lot. Oh of yeah, it. and his his skin is just a nice, nice skin. And I'm like, that's not the guy who's gonna <laughs> walk out. That's not the guy who's no. gonna walk out on stage. The best was I I was at a uh, uh, casino before he passed, and uh, Kenny Rogers was coming to town, and Kenny Rogers looked right. like. His poster looked like he had given them his most recent picture. And it, <laughs> right. it honestly looked like a picture that was just like an example of somebody you'd see at the buffet. That's all it was supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. He didn't, they, <laughs> they didn't fill in teeth. Like he had a fine smile, but you could tell like there are certain ones missing. Right. I respected the hell out of that poster because I was like, Kenny Rogers was like, now if you're coming to see me, just know this is yeah. who you're seeing. You're this is what you're getting. No, I don't. I'm not interested in your expressions of shock. Yeah. So <laughs> here's what it is. Um, we just watched uh, the uh, uh, Rockefeller Center Christmas tree lighting uh, special mm -hmm. that was somehow four fucking hours long. <laughs> um, but part of it was uh, Dolly Parton. Oh. singing a duet with Jimmy Fallon, basically via Zoom. Sure. So the first verse or so, Dolly is sitting in a chair, singing along, and then they cut to Jimmy singing his part, and then when they cut back, Dolly Parton is standing. And I wanted to see what happened between those two cuts, because I don't think she just stood up <laughs> without some help or without making a face. Yeah. I can't stand up with a lot of noise without, yeah. I think like two dudes got <laughs> under her arm <laughs> <laughs> and helped her up. And you know, no shame in the game. No. She doesn't have to do that shit, but she showed up. Damn, yeah. Um, she is a legend who looks back on her life and is content. So she's the one who's like, gotten old has all had the one you're talking about had all the stuff and yep. Go, yep pretty good right she nailed is, it she's still doing it yeah i think the problem with the boy rock stars is that sex <laughs> was so much a part of why they did it in the first place right you know, that once the yeah they're like well, i don't care about these songs <laughs> yeah. i mean paul mccartney so i have to now go to a casino and do my dumb songs and not have sex? <laughs> yeah. No thanks. Yeah, why do I have to do that? Because you don't have a retirement plan. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Remember all the money you spent on the sex? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're at the casino tonight. Ah, oh, that was why Thinking you about uh, sexy 17-year-old girls. <laughs> that was why you're next door to some idiot doing dumb comedy and you're in the dumb room doing your dumb songs <laughs> hey did you hear that comedian next door got murdered 
Because he made a gay joke about a big dude? <laughs> Why don't you write a song about that? Yeah. Ah, I could have been watching that and I had to do my dumb songs. I'd <laughs> rather watch that dumb guy get murdered. <laughs> dumb songs about a 57 Chevy. <laughs> uh. Well, I think we ran out of lyrics. Why, why don't you realize Vienna waits for you? When will you realize Vienna waits for you? <laughs> Can you realize Vienna waits? Yeah. Um, Should just... I realize Vienna waits for me? <laughs> Maybe that's the switch up. Show of hands. Who realizes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a really pretty song that is less pushy than his normal stuff. Yeah. lyrically um yeah he really like in most songs is holding you against the wall <laughs> insisting on something um and this one is just like look take a day off yeah it's and it, very uh, nice and when the song ends uh, we've talked about this before with different songs this song has a definitive musical end he's made a choice yeah. He's written a complete song, beginning to end. It starts with a nice little piano. It ends with a final note that feels natural, right. doesn't feel forced, and and gently lets you, you know, the song sort of floats away from you, but just as suddenly. The song never feels like it's gone as much as it's like it's done for now. And that's yeah. nice. Yeah, it's your song now. Yeah. Take it with you. Yeah, that is nice when they don't play to the radio ending. Yeah. And um, I, which is good because this fucker never got on the radio. <laughs> I think it does now. I think it had like a late blooming. Yeah. But there were a lot of giant hits on that album. So there wasn't much oxygen for this. And this is the kind of song that, well, like it's what you just said about it is maybe why it wasn't a hit right away because it isn't, it doesn't demand much of you as the listener. It is inviting you to listen to it. So you either will or you won't, but eventually right. as time goes on, like uh, I used to say, however old you are, you'll probably eventually be a little bit of a fan of Frank Sinatra. You just probably will in right. your lifetime. And I think that's true of young folks now. You know, you'll just kind of, and maybe not as much as before, but you'll discover certain certain kinds of music will just be timeless. Like right now is the, I'm finally starting to enjoy some classical music. Yeah. My brain's opened up a little bit, or maybe I'm just tired and quiet and I can, <laughs> I can appreciate it. Yeah. And, uh, but it that music was never like, demanding that i listen to it it was never <laughs> right it's just there if you want it i was never being muscled into it i feel like this is such a pretty little song and and it's no longer than it needs to be it feels like it's the length it should be it doesn't feel like there's a and it also doesn't feel like oh did they force this short for a radio edit no nope. this is how long this song should be yeah piano waits for you and it makes you want to go somewhere. I don't know if it makes me want to go to Vienna, but it does make you think, I want to see something pretty. Yeah. Yeah, and I do want to go to Vienna. Have you been? You haven't been. No. Um, Seth went, said it was, you know, just the prettiest city in the world, which I'm sure is true. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, did, uh, did, Seth we'll go. Go, did Seth go because of Billy Joel? I hope so. <laughs> I sincerely doubt it, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> Would be yeah, weird. Vienna. Just pretty. Yeah, I want to see Vienna. I want to see Ireland. Ireland's the one that I, I feel like I have to see. Okay. Because I'm, my I'm 100% going to Ireland. Yeah. Sue. Sue has been seven times, six or seven times. Oh my goodness, okay. She loves it there um, for the music and the pub scene. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm, you know, I think we're all just a little bit dying to go any fucking place right now. 
I'm an Irish fella too, because my you know my grandfather was uh, first generation, so he was from Ireland. It's great. And uh, one of the things I I've always I've said this a lot. There's a lot of different kinds of racism. We all know that, right? A lot of different kinds of bigotry, and a lot of different ways to respond to it. Like when people would decry would, would when people are bigoted and they think that black people aren't smart. Black people rightly said. Well, you know what? You've given us shitty schools, and for a long time, you didn't even let us go to school, right? And then, like right. anti-Semitism, Jews have said, "No, we're not. We're not. We're not cheap." First of all, and also, I don't know what you think that means because everyone's cheap when they're poor. Um, but then, with the Irish, what people are always like, "You guys are all drinkers," and the Irish said, "Yep, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, we like we like drinking." Yeah, you, you nailed it. I will drink to that, they said. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is a, it's a stereotype because it's true. Yeah. You know what they say about the you know what the uh what they say about the I when when you talk about the alcoholic uh poet, uh they say, Why are you being redundant? That's what they say. <laughs> uh, who's in the big room tonight? <laughs> well, one, one year it was um so there was the kenny rogers year what was the other year there was the right. year um there was a year when who's the guy who's got the uh to all the girls i've loved before oh willie yeah willie nelson was i actually played in the room next to willie nelson right and there was this lady who must have been 130 i don't know it's just a whole <laughs> that seems right and she had the most ridiculous rhinestone cowboy outfit, rhinestones, cowboy hat. She looked amazing. Oh. And, I, and, uh, I was, and uh, just as a joke, because she was on her way to her show, I was on her way to, I go, which show are you going? Do you go to Willie or are you going to the, co <laughs> oh, you got to okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, his, his show was sold out. Yeah. My show? was not sold out <laughs> oh well you, you'll get them next time i had a great show that i love that casino that was um not vegas laughlin it was old people vegas it was laughlin. oh laughlin yeah yeah i, I loved laughlin laughlin's great yeah i loved the nobody bothered me i loved the shows it was awesome I like i like a vegas where people go to bed <laughs> <laughs> it's great that's fantastic. Like, oh, well, it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> Enough roulette. Oh, I really tied one on. I had three beers. Ah, <laughs> uh, you ready for this week's trivia question? I'm excited. Yeah, bust with some trivia. Well, you know the obvious answer to who played the most concerts at Madison Square Garden would be Billy in Joel. history. Yeah. Who played the second most? Oh, okay. So Billy Joel obviously played the most. Uh, I would be willing to bet it would be Elton John. Wow. Correct. Yeah. You are correct. Nicely done. Thank you. That was a very educated guess because uh, Elton John, uh, would, like Billy Joel, was a serious tourer. He, yeah. Smart. Well, and you know, any of those guys in particular knew that that's where they were really making money. Any good artist. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, you weren't really making much on publishing rights. You not really. And, and particularly your early records, you probably saw all the money people, other people were making and you're always mad. because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I understand the, the biopics correctly. Yes. Uh, well, like I'm a uh, I'm a big fan of BNL, which uh, I highly recommend going and seeing them live. Um, do you know who BNL is? Wait, who? The Bare Naked Ladies. Ah, they're a uh, great live band. They're Canada's one of the finest bands. Canada's <laughs> own the Bare Naked Ladies. They tour a lot. Yeah, and they haven't had a hit in a long time. They release albums. They still release albums. They haven't had a hit in a long time, but I look around and I go, yeah, you guys made a lot of money tonight. That's just what you got to do. Yeah, yeah. Get yourself a half a dozen good songs. Yeah, and just and go. Get on the bus. Yep. And for some reason, their 
they're aging a very modern way, which is that they know they've started right away eating the right thing. So nobody. In their <laughs> oh, family, yeah, yeah. Nobody it's in their a very funny uh, change in the artist culture that has yeah. happened. Um, I worked at Saturday Night Live for a while, as you know. Yeah. And everything is structured around the original cocaine hours <laughs> uh, that the writers had in the 70s. They haven't changed the hours. Like writing night is Tuesday night and they still start at like 7 p.m. and go until dawn. But no one's on cocaine now. <laughs> they are, they get salads and <laughs> smoothies and they'll like take yoga breaks oh. and stuff like that. It's really funny. <laughs> um, but everyone, you know, we, these people gave their lives, <laughs> to, you know, so that we could learn from it. Yeah. Uh, we just kept the hours <laughs> for whatever funny. reason. And I think maybe that'll change someday. Like our whole culture will start going to concerts at 4 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just like, we'll be home at 6.30. Uh, fire up a smoothie and then we're good. I have all often said one of my favorite parts about going to about concerts now is if I'm seated near a restroom. I like that. So I can go pee. And then uh, I like a good concert where I like that is a great concert. Hey, you know, if we leave now, we'll beat the traffic. I love that. Yeah. I won't even really buy tickets unless I can get in the back row of a section on the aisle. Yeah. Because uh, what if there's a fire? That's my main thing. <laughs> What if there's a fire? I don't want to have to try to squinch past 15 people to get out of my row. Because in my fantasy about the fire, nobody else moves. <laughs> and I have to get out because I'm the only one who knows about the fire. Right. It's uh, So I'm like, all right, back bro thing. If I can be near a bathroom, great. If I can be equidistant between uh, snacks and the bathroom, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Young concert. I think I smell pot concert now. I think those are soft pretzels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know I'm not going to drink because then I'll have to go to the bathroom more. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to dehydrate myself all day long. Yeah. I'll, afterwards, I'll have a, a, some filtered water. Yeah. Movies and concerts, what I do, I, uh, I'll buy a drink and I wait until about halfway through to start drinking it. Yeah, that's my system now because I do because um, if I drink I, right away, worthless. If uh, anyone is still listening to this, <laughs> uh, just type the word koala into the comments. I just am running an experiment. <laughs> Sweet. Just the word koala by itself in the comments, uh, <laughs> and, and we'll see. And I will and maybe I'll send you. I'll Venmo you or something. Nice. All right. Yeah. And maybe he won't. Yeah. Greater likelihood, honestly. <laughs> um, next week, unless do we have a hiatus week, or are we still, are we on? Are we on the air? I think we should. Just, I'm down to just do another show. I'm we'll keep doing it. You got somewhere to be? No. Um, I would like to do uh, the opposite <laughs> of this week's song. I would like to do "Angry Young Man." Oh, fantastic! Yeah, and try to figure out if he is uh, ironically talking about himself or if he has no self-awareness at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Angry Young Man from Turnstiles. Oh, some, some good damn piano on that song. Amazing piano. Yeah, high production. Yeah, not, this uh, a little more demanding than Vienna. Listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I've, I've seen him 15 times in concert. I think eight of those, this was the first song. Oh, man, that's hilarious. Let's just start out with that piano thing. And uh, I could see why, too, just from the standpoint of a show. You get the yeah. audience juiced up and let's do this. That's, yeah. Get right into it. Yeah. Um, so, all right. St uh, stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned next week. <laughs> yeah, that I, I think that's an episode. I'm gonna stop recording.